It would be uh, my greatest pleasure to be invited here, and uh, especially I will thank for um, this organizing staff of this conference, or, uh, also of this network for. And uh, today, yeah, my talk is uh, authority in Kata. And uh, yes, uh, today I don't use screen. And uh, I would read. I would like to read my paper, and I ask give my whole manuscript to you all. And you know, this is a Japanese one of the Japanese uh, typical kata, yeah, in presentation, and or katadori, it means. I mean, uh, uh, it's. Uh, I think it's uh, not popular in Europe, so I ask for your understanding. And. Uh, I'm sorry that um, I'm sorry for my typo on first page footnote one, and all references to Nishida's text are based on the second, not li not latest, second edition of the complete works of Nishida Kitaro, Nishida Kitaro Zenshu. Then my talk will take uh, maybe around uh, 25 minutes, so it would be long. But uh, I think it's uh, also katadori. Maybe, but in a small voice. Uh, anyway, and uh, so from introduction, uh, in his famous book, Kata, uh, Ryoen Minamoto states that kata, which shapes a body movement and action, means a form of forms, katachi no katachi. Uh, according to Minamoto, kata, the form of forms, is a form that is established and accomplished by a number of repetitions of a chosen form and cutting out anything that is unnecessary in order to embody it sustainably for generations. Then Minamoto says, quote, kata has a functionality, reasonableness, stability, and a kind of beauty, unquote. Therefore, kata is a refined model or pattern as a form of forms that is passed down by our predecessors. In addition, Minamoto focuses on geino and bugei, where one's goal is to assimilate oneself into kata, kata to jiko to douka suru, through practice in order to put one's body and mind into the form. And this assimilation should naturally lead to a modification and cre creation of kata. Minamoto emphasizes that this shows a case where we can find the self purposiveness of running through kata. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, why should one's assimilation into kata not be done as a mere stage or means in the process of practice, but become its own end? In this paper, I answer this question with my interpretation of Nishida Kitaro's later philosophy. Nishida claims the world where we live exists as a self-forming of the form, kata no jiko keisei, and we interpret that kata might be understood as a kind of united form of the self-forming of the form in Nishida's thought. I, I will skip next paragraph, and uh, next page is the final last passage of this introduction, but from the middle, according, yes, fourth line. According to Nishida, the negation of the will that proves for, uh, for a substance or essence as a ground can bring about a creative act of the self and the co-creative relationship of entities, especially between the self and the others, that is radically different from the self. I clarify the signification of practicing kata that brings about an encounter between the self and the other through alterity. And one, self-formation of the form and acting intuition. But the koiteki chokka acting intuition is I think a well known among these members, so I will skip most parts except uh, uh, page three, second paragraph. For Nishida, for Nishida, the form things exist as an expression of a determinate form, which means both the spatial and the temporal relationship to ourselves as subjects. The shape of a thing is a kind of such form. In other words, an expression of a way of our act or a call, yobigoe, to invite oneself to act upon things in a determinate way. And then next to the next paragraph, 
And just uh, summarizing, Nishida also raises self-formation of the form where being possibly formed by a form <laughs> and one's active act of forming a new form exists only as two different sides of one act, one same act. And to the next paragraph, I indicate the notion of koiteki chokkan, acting intuition, hatarak koto wa miru koto de, miru koto wa hatarak koto de aru. And in the self-formation of the form, subject and the object are both sides of the one and the same acting event, with no substance, no substrate as a ground, and working and seeing create each other only through the negation of having or setting a ground in the manner of acting intuition, koitek chokkan. And then move to second, two, part two, individual self-forming through perishing. I will read the four. The process of the self-formation of the form as moving from the form to the form. Without any ground, it's termed by Nishida to be self-determination of the eternal now, which means, quote, centering on the present all things that come to life and become creative. Unquote. A self-determination of the eternal now is thus where all facts within the process from the past to the future are in, in relation to and call each other to show or realize their own distinctive characteristic and unique individuality. In other words, acting intuition in the present arises as the center or as the focal point of the individual koseteki na self-forming or self-creating of the whole itself. Therefore, there is no principle or origin as a ground existing prior to each event that makes them related to and united with each other. Each event relates to each other neither teleologically nor mechanically, rather only through an event of calling and forming an individuality of each event one another or expressing and contrasting its irreplaceable uniqueness, each other. And skip the next paragraph. And the fact that the process of the self-formation of the form exists without any ground indicates that each activity of self-formation and its created form <coughs> can arise so far as it vanishes, kiesaru, or perishes in eternity when it completed because there is no ground as a substance or substrate that holds them. As in this as a statement in Tetsugaku Ron Bunshu Daigo, by means of its branching or perishing, each made form actually comes to be able to express its irreplaceable uniqueness, and at the same time, to call the other form that will arise in the future to invite its irreplaceable uniqueness, as in the case of inter-expression in acting intuition we have seen before, then each shaped form expresses the interrelationships of all the forms from one determinate perspective, and it's determined and finite or impermanent to be changed through perishing and a new formation <coughs> in the future. Therefore, it is also remarkable that self-formation of the form is never formulated by the notion of substantial self-identity that indicates the manner of being self-identical in and by itself. In the self-formation, one's format formative act in the present arises only in the condition of its piercing. One's present act cannot complete itself on its own, but only by its piercing, for which any ground must neither be given mechanically nor teleological. This leads us to the fact that One's self, or one's act and life itself, as well as all beings and the world, exist otherwise than having their own ground, namely being otherwise than being self-grounded, self-completed, and self-immanent in themselves. The existence of each act paradoxically expresses and involves authority as a person or death by expressing its irrepressible characteristics. It shows a not self-grounded or a non-self-immanent identity, famous of which Nishida terms contradictory self-identity, 
And three, being bodily. I skip the first paragraph and to next second. The fact that the self actively forms things and that the self sees or discovers itself as formed or given by external forms things are at one. And for Nishida, this shows that the self is bodily. As suggested by Nishida's statement in Tetsugaku Ron Bunshu Dai San, quote, a human being is a body existence and at the same time possesses the body as a tool. Unquote. Being bodily includes both sides of the self as an acting subject and a given object that is external and can be a tool for acting upon things. As considered that the self is a body self, remarkably suggests that Self-knowing one's acting self can be established only with a not self-grounded or not self-immanency contradictory self-identity. Nishida states, quote, the body is what is seen from the outside as well as what works from within. It is what forms and sees itself as this contradictory self-identity. Accordingly, as Nishida puts, quote, we are always seeing ourselves through acting intuition. This means that ourself has to be body. Unquote. In Nishida's famous words, the body is what sees as well as what works, he makes a claim not about things, but about a self seeing or self knowing body and its contradictory self identity. It should be better, I think it's a little bit different uh, from uh, usual interpretation. In short, according to Nishida, the body is what is seen from outside as well as what works from within. Thus, it is a form that expresses how the self as such forms things in concurrence with being formed by external things through the acting intuition and self-formation of the form. From this point of view, as Nishida writes in Philosophical Essays, Vol. 4, Volume 4, quote, our body is a form of the self-determination of the world as a holistic one existing in the manner of contradictory self-identity. Um, and that is the way of this self-determination." Our body is a form for inter-expressing and co-contrasting the irreplaceable uniqueness of whole entities in acting intuition. In other words, as we consider the form of individual self-forming or self-creating for entities. Skip the next. And here we can also find the reason why Nisha recognizes our body in a contradictory self-identity as it directly expresses the fact that it should perish. And then Nishida, you know, Nishida designates this kind of body as a rekisteki shintai. Being body especially displays formedness, formedness or createdness as conditions for the establishment of an acting self. This means that the self's creativity actualizes as long as the self answers the problem of how it actively works in the inter-expression of entities only in the formed and given situation here and now. It is our body self that can truly realize the irreplaceable characteristic of entities in contradictory self-identity. That is, as we've seen, the body itself directly expresses authority as piercing or death. The body itself just recognizes its own death, not because of its finite biological nature, rather by actualizing its own irreplaceable uniqueness that will never exist again. I will skip the next paragraph. Uh, but the first part of the ne next paragraph, and uh, yeah, from the middle, thus, not the middle, but thus, the form in the present expresses the determinate form or way of the relationship between forms or of moving from the past form to the present form. This united form should be the form of forms. And these forms of forms or forms in general are established as multiple layers expressing or reflecting each other. Nisa develops his thinking on a period 
a society and a nation as a form of forms, but not on kata, our topic, which still can be counted as a kind of form of form in the Nishidia view. Nevertheless, first I pay attention to that the body itself in our daily activities is already a form that expresses the forms of forms. And for next part, part four, I am though mediated through nothing or nothingness. But the first paragraph I summarize, <coughs> I will summarize. And um, the body is a form of the inter-expression of entities and the Nishida referred to the such interpretation, inter-expressive relationship of the self and the soul as the other person. Nishida says, quote, the I and the soul confront one another, not in the way of working upon, but of being born. And the next paragraph, in this case, the acting self and the things work upon one another, presupposing a purpose or a principle as a ground on the one hand. And on the other hand, the negation of the will for a ground should enable this co-working to arise. In the example of a carpenter, it is necessary to deny the manner of pushing one's way grounded on a purpose or a principle one sets. However, it is so only in the manner of keeping a purpose or a motive for building, of course. It should be absolutely different from the relationship of the, of the I and the though as the personal other. In self-formation of the form, every single entity authentically co-creates, inter-expresses, and co-contrasts with its characteristic each other, without having any ground that is mediated through nothing as a ground or the nothingness of a ground. As Nisda writes, quote, I am I, though is though, as long as the I and the though <coughs> confront one after as a person, through and through, unquote. And in addition, quote, it, I add, that is the mediator of the I and the though, must be absolutely nothing, and at the same time establishes all entities, and because it is nothingness, it must establish independent entities as they are. Unquote. The activity of co-creating and interpresenting, which Nishida calls self-determination of the eternal now, creates itself by itself without any origin or ground prior to this activity. This is not in the way of working upon on some ground, but in the way of being born, being born from nothing or nothingness of the ground, consequently negating radically the will to set and probe for any common ground as an idea or purpose, principle, essence, etc., opens and discovers the encounter between the I and the though that is radically different from the I, mediated through nothing as a ground or nothingness of a ground. In my interpretation, interpretation sorry, this shows the way of being present together without finding any ground upon which we depend. Even not sharing the same idea or purpose as a basis or ground between the self and the others, thus in the midst of a conflict of interest, each one confronts and shares an irreplaceable event or a co-creative act as being present together as they are, without a common ground, or encounter each other without a ground. In addition, because of its beyond groundedness or not self-groundedness or non-self-immanence, being present together raises the condition of its eternal piercing, which implies a parting of I and thou with no ground. Thus, the personal encounter of I and thou as being present together without a ground is established only through perishing and parting as authority. Here, suffering or sorrow in conflicts is never abolished because the life of a human being itself cannot be grounded on an idea or a purpose, but it exists only through authority as opposed to an optimistic view. Then it should also be seen that being present together as they are different through nothing or nothingness does not exclude the way of co-working on the ground, but includes it 
or lives it with and from being present together without ground, which does not lie as any ground prior to or separate from co-working. This also indicates that the body of the Tao exists not as some two, but as the body of the Tao itself, as long as I and Tao confront each other as unique individuals. This means that the form as a body of the others exists in the inter-expression or co-contrasting of the irrepressible, irrepressible uniqueness of I and Tao, which we have seen as being present together without depending on the ground. For instance, while a parent gathers an infant without thinking about the parent's own convenience, the infant becomes relaxed and breathes deeply and then becomes heavier. Here, a form that expresses their interrelationship is made bodily in the manner of embracing, where they come to live with each other, released from tension, anxiety, or some other form of stress, even while they have many difficulties in their lives. Then it should be noted that this co-formative event comes into being insofar as it has no purpose, namely does not aim to, in a sense, put the infant to sleep with this. Yeah, etc. And uh, skip the next paragraph. The case seems to be the same as comforting, confronting, sorry, and the case seems to be the same as comforting a friend with whom one has been in conflict and who is in pain, or embracing a parent dying on a bed. In all of these cases, the encounter is not grounded on a common idea or purpose, but arises only through being present together as they are different, without depending upon any ground. Furthermore, as we have said that the body itself recognizes its perishing or death by realizing its own irreplaceable uniqueness, the body form that is made in these cases expresses their uniqueness and preciousness. Thus, at the same time, the fact that it should perish in a manner such as feeling the deep breath of the other in other words, touching the fact of living individually together just here and now and never after. And I will skip the next paragraph. So coming to closing remarks, but uh, and I skip most of the part of first paragraph, just the last one. I will read the last part of the first paragraph. Nishida clarifies a form as a body form, and it opens up the personal relation, relationship of I and thou that is radically different from I as being present together here and now, which cannot be included in or mediated through any ground. Then we shall say that kata should be counted as a body form of moving from form to form without any ground in this thought, because in kata, as a body form, where to work upon external things or other persons and to be formed by them, becomes united. Past things and future things create each other in the present body action. This consideration leads us to the claim that one's assimilation into kata can be realized only through the denial of the will in setting a purpose or end that is radically different from the self as a ground. And not at all, not at all by regarding kata as a means in the process to attain some end. That should be the reason why kata becomes its own end. Practicing kata might make the self discover one's self full of artificiality towards the external and lead the self not to be free from what transcends such a self to attain an ideal relationship for the self and the external things or the others but with a denial of the will probing for a ground to bring about a co-creating or co-contrasting between them in acceptance of and in accordance with the self is as it is so, namely in being present together as they are. In addition, practicing kata that has been made and held for generations realizes an interrelationship of the forming self in the present and the perishing others who formed kata in the past. 
the assimilation into kata of the self and the others continues the co-creation of kata at every single occasion in an individual and irreplaceable way through piercing and parting as the alterity, which indicates another way than the self-grounded self-identity. We can also notice that leaving kata opens a personal relationship of the self and the other as such, but it exists only in the limited region or community of geino, budo, or other gay or jutsu, as considered every single act of the self in daily life radically forms a unique form as a body, so it's piercing as authority in the self-formation of the form while negating the being of any ground. Actually, practicing kata cannot become its own end. It forms and expresses or comes to life within the form made body, not in a special region, but within our daily activities and life, with having nothing to ground on, which is mediated through nothing as or nothingness of ground. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Mickey 
Today, my talk emphasizes a form, katachi, expresses the united form or the form of the form. Because uh, this concerns the uh, previous uh, question by uh, Professor Hezik. And because, uh, of course, uh, in Sado or uh, in uh, the martial arts or uh, gay dog, we have to run kata, the pattern. But after that, what can we do? Sometimes uh, there's separation existed. There's a separation from that. But I think uh, kata or pattern has to be expressed within or by the bodily form in the daily action of self. So maybe Nikki wants to distinguish between the united form or pattern kata and from each form katachi. I know, because uh, his, uh, his interest includes uh, nation or uh, regular or uh, law or something. And uh, of course, Nishida, Nishida's in, in, Nishida is interested in that topic. So just in just indication, but uh, Nishida also, some, on, in some article, uh, considers uh, kata as a pattern, uh, like uh, nation or a period. Yeah, but uh, today my talk goes a little bit different direction because uh, each form is very important. But the thing is that each bodily form in the daily action because so I will emphasize uh, not emphasize I will sorry I don't want to emphasize the difference between them. Of course there is a difference. Then after that I interpret or. I want to transform some relationship between them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know that. <laughs> so I, I want to ask you about. In English? <laughs> okay, yeah, oh, it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> because, uh. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, pretty. Need to start the question. I don't think. Oh. <laughs> so I want to ask you a very hard question. Yeah. But it's a hard question for me too. It's a hard question I think for Nishida yeah. interpretation. So you did several points in your paper. Yeah. Um, where you quote Nishida. Mm -hmm. Later philosophy. Yeah. As, um, yes. So the question is about is about mu. No. So sometimes the mu ki de. That's kind of the So. Uh, without a, a ground. Without any ground. Other places, of course, he talks about uh, mm -hmm. and you quote that. Mm -hmm. But when you um, comment or interpret, mm -hmm. you say, for example, on page 8, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the top paragraph, mm -hmm. uh, the eye and thou, the predicate from the eye, mediated through nothing as a ground mm -hmm. or
truly relate to one another when there is no medium in it, or when there's a medium of nothingness. Yes. So um, help help us understand better. Is nothing or nothing move a ground, or is it a negation of any ground? I think the first of Davis knows my answer. <laughs> of course, both. Of course, but it's very difficult. So we consider further, and we are looking forward to the logic and expressing the both are the same, or the both are the different sides of the one thing. But I think uh, it's not necessary to distinguish. Oh, of course, uh, there's a distinction, but uh, not contrary. I think. But uh, my answer, maybe you guess my answer, and uh, you feel some anxious, anxious about me, about my. No, no. I, I just think it's a really important idea. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of because uh, it's a paradoxical. Uh, I use <coughs> a paradoxical expression. Uh, maybe it's soon nothing as well. Maybe it's soon nothing. It's both because I made it through something, but the something is nothing. It's very paradoxical, but uh, I think that we try to find uh, some logic expresses this issue. That's a, that's a point, my point. Yeah. Okay. So the very last question, very quickly, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your talk, everybody. Um, it brought up uh, a tension that I don't want to resolve, but I'm glad that you brought this up. So it, it brought a tension in my mind between you uh, should often refer to as formless, so Bukai, and your talk of the of Kata and the form. Because uh, when, I, when I try to think about this kind of determination, that you should speak stuff. So uh, that you brought up the, 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 the concept of interior expression. Trying to sort out how kata itself might be, as a form, might be fit into the context of determination with the initiative. So, and to try to the concept of determination with every certain determination of the end phase, the one of the end phase. So, I think that, that I guess in my mind, I associate the type of determination that the initiative speaks of in terms of determination uh, that it's determined, whereas I wonder if, or, or uh, and, and the association that, that might have to nothingness, formlessness. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if there's a tension between thinking of kata mm -hmm. as a form mm -hmm. and, and trying to incorporate that as initiative and think about how a form mm -hmm. might fit into this context of understanding mm -hmm. determination. Because it seems like maybe he, maybe he wouldn't he would want to, to, to not speak of something that's fully describable the way we would want for him to be in mm -hmm. martial arts or aesthetic mm -hmm. matters. Mm -hmm. So is there a possibility of thinking that we want to bring kata in, really the determiner in, in, in initiative, mm -hmm. it should be something that's formed, it should be something that's yeah. maybe has some
the notion of kata, if you know, if you know kata, we can fully um, describe kata, but if it's this is the notion of uh, seeing the form of the form. That's today's suggestion. 